Imagine going for a leisurely stroll by the river on a Sunday afternoon when you stumble across something as shocking as this. I'm not sure about you, but I believe I'd turn around and run the other way. Stick around for this episode of Things You'll See for the First Time in Your Life to find out just what was hiding beneath those murky waters, as well as a whole host of other things that'll make your eyes pop straight out of your head. What's the most adorable animal you've ever seen? Perhaps a little cat or a tiny newborn duckling? You can put all of that behind you now as I present you the most beautiful creature you've probably never heard of, a baby short-beaked echidna, sometimes known as a puggle. It's this adorable bundle of joy. In case you didn't know, echidnas, sometimes known as spiny anteaters, are the only mammals known to lay eggs except the platypus. Echidnas are highly secretive animals, according to Simon Duffy, head of wildlife conservation at Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia, which has raised several puggles. Because little is known about their mating behaviours, they've historically been difficult to breed in zoos. These odd tiny mammals, like kangaroos, have a particular carrying pouch for their young. Warm-blooded echidna puggles emerge from eggs 10 days after birth and spend another 40 days in their mother's pouch. After sliding out of its mother's pouch onto a walking track, the puggle in this video was left to fend for itself. Fortunately, the Taronga crew was on hand to nurse this little sweetie back to health. I believe I've discovered my new unhealthy passion. I don't know about you, but I could lie on the grass for hours and watch the clouds above me. If you're lucky, you might see some strange forms like a cat or a ghostly face. But if you spend enough time observing the clouds, you might see something truly fantastic like this. The flawless day-to-night shift of a lenticular cloud above Mount Teed, a volcanic peak in the Canary Islands. It's captured in this remarkable time-lapse by amateur photographer Bartos Wojcinski. When air blows across a hill or mountain range, lenticular clouds develop, which can produce a train of enormous standing waves in the air downstream, similar to ripples in a river when the water goes over a barrier. If there's enough moisture in the air, the wave's upward motion will cause water vapor to condense, giving the lenticular cloud its distinctive shape. However, as the moist air descends via the waves, these clouds can swiftly evaporate back into vapor, dissipating just as quickly as they appeared. Lenticular clouds have been mistaken for UFOs because of these characteristics, as well as their distinctive lens shape and smooth edges. Who's going to tell the Area 51 fans that they've been obsessed with clouds all along? Moths and butterflies have some of the most stunning patterns in the animal kingdom, but what do you think of their peculiar appearance? The Macrocilix maya is a moth endemic to Southeast Asia that has a unique protection against predators. The once pristine white moth may appear to have been innocently hanging out on a bird's favorite pooping leaf, but the twist is, that's precisely the idea. Furthermore, that isn't even genuine feces. In reality, this instinct is the Leonardo da Vinci of moths, since that revolting picture has been painted on by years of painstaking development. The two brown dots that look like bird guano, as well as the two red-eyed flies that appear to be feasting on it, are just elaborate markings that the moth has developed to save its own bacon. Because many of the moth's natural predators associate insects that feed on bird droppings with disease, many of the moth's natural predators will avoid eating them. If the sight of flies on poop wasn't revolting enough, the moth is also said to emit a pungent odor that could be mistaken for actual guano. That's what I call dedication. It's difficult to imagine what life would be like if dinosaurs still roamed the earth, but there are a few living creatures who could give them a run for their money. You'd think you'd stumbled upon the set of the next Jurassic Park movie if you came across the shoebill stalk in the swamps of eastern tropical Africa. These enormous creatures resemble Tim Burton's animatronic puppets more than actual birds, and they have one terrifying face to boot. They usually eat huge fish like lungfish, eels, and catfish with that big old beak, but they've also been known to eat Nile monitor lizards, snakes, and even young crocodiles. The stalk would stay motionless as if it were a statue, waiting for its next prey to swim past before pouncing forward and devouring it with its large beak. The bird will then whip its head back and forth, tipping out whatever it doesn't want to consume after clamping down on its meal. Furthermore, these bad boys can reach a height of five feet, so if you ever need another reason to like the shoebill stalk, consider this. They literally poop all over their own legs. Poop is mostly liquid in stalks, and the heat from the warm blood passing through their legs is used to evaporate it, resulting in cooler blood circulating through the bird. 
I suppose that's a more energy-efficient option than turning on the air conditioner. Are you an adrenaline junkie? What's the most bizarre thing you've ever done? Whatever it is, I'm willing to bet it isn't nearly as thrilling as this. Andrea Badendick, a 25-year-old Norwegian influencer, is the truly courageous individual in this stomach-churning clip. I'm sure you've heard of bungee jumping, but the Lingenfjord bungee takes an already extreme activity and makes it much more so. A beautiful truss bridge spans the Gorsa Gorge, which used to be Norway's best-kept secret. Anyone with large enough kahoolies to leap from here will be tumbling into northern Europe's deepest canyon, 150 meters deep to be precise. Check it out. If the noise of the waterfall and the whooshing of the wind in your ears weren't enough to set your heart racing, Andrea leapt right into a rainbow. I'm curious whether she discovered a pot of gold at the bottom. Have you ever been swimming in a lake and suddenly had a flood of fear about what type of sinister animals might be hiding beneath the surface? Normally, there's no need to be concerned, but would you risk swimming in this river? What could be making such a stir in these normally calm waters? Is it a herd of farting hippos, a swarm of ravenous piranha, or a genuine sea monster on par with Nessie? I'm afraid the solution is just as nefarious, but for very different reasons. The lady who shot this unusual video on the 10th of June 2017 at St. John's River in Debury, Florida, claims that her husband was bailing water out of their boat after a major storm when the splashes struck the surface and the river became animated. They couldn't believe what they were seeing, so the man dumped another pail of water into the mix to capture it on camera. The filmers stated they had no idea what had sparked the controversy when the video was originally released. However, some keen observers noticed something. Those who looked at the video more attentively were able to deduce the truth. A herd of peaceful manatees or sea cows were agitated by the ripples on the water's surface, which generated the frantic splashing you observe. Despite the fact that it's impossible to verify whether the manatees were damaged by whatever was thrown into the river, many people were outraged by the perceived abuse of the animals. Manatees are a protected species in the United States, and harassing them, even accidentally, is considered a felony. Anyone breaking the state legislation protecting manatees might face up to 60 days in prison and a $500 fine, while violating the federal statute could result in a year in prison and a $50,000 punishment. Water torture, to say the least. You probably don't think trees are particularly fascinating, but I believe that it's past time for me to convince you you're wrong. I promise you'll be mesmerized just by looking at the Tibetan cherry tree's trunk. These gorgeous metallic-looking trees, believe it or not, are not composed of copper. The tree, which is native to China and is known as Prunus cerula, is recognized for its magnificent bark. The polished mahogany stems are completely distinctive and gleam in all seasons. The outer layer of the bark is robust and resilient, similar to mylar, a type of polyester film, and it peels away in bands as the tree matures, providing an appealing look that's especially beautiful in the winter months. Small cherry-like fruits, which make excellent natural bird feeders, arrive in the autumn. I don't know about you, but if my yard was full of these eye-catching trees, I'd never leave. The Statue of Liberty, Christ the Redeemer, and, believe it or not, Michelangelo's David are just a few of the world's largest sculptures. But have you ever seen the world's largest bird sculpture? This massive bird statue may be located in the picturesque surroundings of Kerala's Kolam district. It's called Jatayu Earth Center Nature Park, and it's an amazing piece of human engineering. The park is located at an elevation of 1,200 feet above sea level, and the gem in its crown is the Jatayu-inspired bird. In the Hindu epic Ramayana, before collapsing on the rocks in the hamlet of Chadamayangalam, Jatayu, a demi-deity and celestial bird battled heroically for the safety of Sita, daughter of the earth goddess Bhumi. The sculpture, which was built as a memorial to this deceased legend, is 200 feet long, 150 feet wide, 70 feet tall, and covers 15,000 square feet of floor space. Rajiv Ankal, a film director, screenwriter, and sculptor, spent 10 years creating it before the park opened to the public on August 17, 2018. To get to the park, visitors must use a cable car, but once there, they may walk over its wide wings and climb over its massive talons and head. Imagine if this item spontaneously sprang to life and flew away one day. The Seven Wonders of the World is surely familiar to you. The Great Pyramids of Giza, the only original entry on the list, are still standing today, while a revised version now adds the Taj Mahal, Machu Picchu, and the Great Wall of China. But there's a potential 8th place challenger that you've probably never heard of, the Flying Lake. 
This gorgeous place may appear to be a work of fiction, but it's not. The mind-bending lake, also known as Vargasvatn, is located amid the Trilanipa cliffs on the Danish Faroe island of Varga. The lake is roughly 40 meters above the Atlantic Ocean surface and is bordered by a higher rock that prevents it from completely draining into the sea. The higher the cliffs on each side, the better. From some angles, the Bora La Fossa waterfall, the lake's exit, offers the stunning appearance that the lake is much higher than it actually is. Although the scenery is beautiful, the location's history is less so. In reality, the Tralanipa cliffs are known as slave cliffs because it was formerly the site of Viking immigrants pushing enslaved women from Ireland and Scotland 465 feet into the sea below. What a lovely lady. Have you ever wondered how airborne firefighters replenish their water supply while they're running low? They can't afford to load their helicopters with gallons and gallons of liquid after all. So there you have it. Probably didn't know this, but all fire departments are legally able to draw water from private swimming pools to assist them in fighting fires in an emergency. After seeing the pool from above, the pilot can descend and fill it up with a huge expanding bucket, which is normally only done as a last option. However, you're not obligated to cooperate. Because helicopter pilots have excellent situational awareness, merely stepping up to the helicopter and waving your arms away will suffice to indicate your displeasure. The operation in this movie was shot in Praga, Portugal in 2011 by a neighbor who ended up becoming friends with the guy operating the helicopter. When the pilot, who was also using a GoPro to document the incident from his perspective, noticed the first column of smoke, he was returning to the runway from another blaze. He utilized his initiative to assist battle the fire before it came too close to the residences by using the nearest swimming pool he could find. With his 600-liter bucket, he made roughly 25 refills in all and the fire was completely out by the time the fire engine arrived 20 minutes later. If the pool owner chooses to submit a complaint with the civil defense, it appears that they are also entitled to reimbursement for damages or lost water. I'm curious whether anyone has ever attempted to fill their own pool by employing an emergency chopper to empty someone else's pool. That would be an interesting story twist. Which of these items most struck or astonished you? If you still haven't had your fill, why not go back and watch one of the previous episodes of this show?